Okay guys, Ink Smith back again. Time for a final autopsy on this Shannon situation until Emily finally makes her response to what has gone down. Um, I think anyone who stuck with me through all chapters 1 through 12 in the leaked files, first of all, thank you so much. You guys gave me the encouragement to get through all those. I really don't know if I could have done it without you guys saying, yeah, we want to listen to the next one. Yeah, we want to listen to the next one. Holy cow, I can't believe I learned this. Um, some people asked why it was called leaked files. Well, 91 pages were published, but I don't know who exactly found it, but someone leaked it to Nick DiOrio, the full 112 page she was going to publish, and the chunks that some people had suggested to her to take out of it. And some of those big chunks were like the stuff about her family at the end, which, guys, if you haven't listened to any of those, listen to the last chapter 12 and 13. She goes into a part about her sibling, which I feel like gets way too personal. But then after that, digs into her own family so harsh. Like, even if you don't like your family or your family was horrible to you, um, I, I really... It kind of hurts me to see people bring people online and talk trash about them when they have nothing to do with the online community. If you decide to become a public figure and you want to put yourself out there on the internet, I feel like you open yourself up to insult, judgment, and everything like that. Of course, you open yourself up to a lot of great things too, like you know, conversations with your viewers, um, information on things you might not have learned about in the past. But when you grab people who have a completely offline existence and throw them into the mix of what you want to talk trash about. I just feel like it's kind of despicable. Sorry, that's just, that's my last take on that. I'm not going to say anything more because I feel like her poor sibling has been dragged through the mud enough already. Let's get into some of the trash that Shannon talked on a lot of other YouTubers. That's a mix between, number one, uh, videos that have come out recently where some YouTubers have come forward and said like, look, what she just said was like super not true at all. I don't know if I'm going to capture every single YouTuber within this. You guys probably know even more within um, the whole artosphere, the art community sphere, the rantosphere. I don't know what you want to call it, but there's so many different communities she was intertwined with. I'm probably going to miss a couple. Throw them in the comments below and I will research them and bring those up as well because no, Emily is the number one person who needs to be vindicated, but a lot of these other people need to be vindicated as well because she really threw some people under the bus. First of all, Tipster. Well, you probably already heard about him quite a few times. Um, her big thing to slam him about was that he cried on stream, which he himself says he cannot find what video she is talking about where he cried on stream. He said she trashed him for crying on stream because she donated a lot of money to him and that that was something she wanted to trash talk to like kind of throw him under the bus and kind of, you know, make all kinds of, I mean, just horrible like insults that skip even critically um, judging his reports on things, but go straight to like looks and the, his body and stuff like that. I always feel like that's such a sick low blow. Like at no point in reading any of this have I ever attacked the way Shannon looks. I refuse to do that. I think attacking or insulting the way someone looks or the way their body is, is pretty much bringing a gun to a verbal fight. You've shown everyone that you're not gonna be rational and you're not gonna argue with your mind. Instead, you're gonna argue with your like primate level brain, your lizard brain, and just shout stuff about their body and their face and their, you know, maybe you can get to their personality. I can understand that because personality is not a physical attribute of you. Um, but I, I'm really sickened by the stuff she, I'm not even going to go into repeating like some of the stuff she said about tipsters overall appearance, but even the attacking cried on stream. So supposedly he cried on stream when she donated a large amount of money to him. And that's what she used to also attack him later. Do you feel like she might've just done that to like get an emotional reaction out of him to kind of hold him under the prison of her charm to be like, oh, well, later when things come out about me, I can always call Tipster on my side. Oh, he didn't come to my side? Well, screw you for getting emotional. <laughs> I'm like, what? Next is Vangelica. Um, I thought this was the craziest one to me. She says uh, she donated $500 to, uh, I, I can't remember exactly what happened with Vangelica, but she was, um, it was for something that she needed. It was like a new computer or a new, uh, like some kind of house or moving thing or something like that. I can't remember. I'm sorry. I should remember this better. What what 
what blew my mind was it was a GoFundMe and she donated $500 and said she wanted the money back. First of all, when you donate, you're, there's no chance that you're getting that money back. I can understand like sponsoring a Kickstarter and you don't get the Kickstarter at the end, like whatever the product is they're making and you want your money back, that makes sense. Donating to someone like moving or some sort of intangible thing and then asking for your money back later because they pissed you off is such a crude, underhanded thing to do. Don't donate money that you're ever going to ask for back, all right? Donation means it's leaving your hands and going into the hands of another whose cause you support. That, And then on top of it, the, the most mind-blowing part is she never actually gave her the money. Like, she's, Vangelica said she went through all of her receipts and everything of whatever she needed, and she had never actually donated the money. There was no $500. So at first I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, if, if she donated that, she really can't be asking for that back. And then Vangelica makes a video where she's like, I don't know what you're talking about, Shannon. Like, I've never... Like, you know, if you have it, show me a receipt. And of course, I read through the all 112 page document. There is no receipt in there. There's nothing in there that shows anything she ever gave to anybody. I mean, she can talk trash about all this donating of money and everything like that. That's great. That's super and all. But I've never seen what you actually donated. I've never seen any of these. And second of all, like, so what? Now you're going to use that as a knife to hold the people's throats and, and shame them for you giving them money? Wow. Mm. Very nice. Great manners there. Genuine woman. Um, next up is uh, Ashley Lilly. Um, I heard recently Ashley Lilly changed her channel name or her YouTuber name, but I, I didn't catch what it was, so I'm sorry. If someone wants to correct that in the comments below, that's okay. Ashley Lilly was a big contender to fight against Davey Vanity. If you don't know about him, he was a scene kid from a while back who had assaulted quite a few girls, taken advantage of younger listeners of his music. He's a disgusting guy. He's vile. He really reminds me of the worst of the worst of the creeps that used to be in the, the whole scenester get up and everything like that. You know, back to my days of like the black converse and the bandanas hanging off of every part of my body and a tight black t-shirt and tight black jeans and, you know, spin kicking in the mosh pit. Like, uh, this is like the disgusting vile, most wretched part of that scene. Every scene has its bad apples. Like, I'm not saying, oh, this, you know, the days of, like, deathcore, metalcore, and grindcore mosh pits were total trash. And, you know, I know his music wasn't any of that type of music. I get it. I know it wasn't my jam either. But he was a disgusting manipulator of his listeners. And Ashley Lilly was on a campaign to get this guy stomped out, like to just get him completely shut down and arrested, some kind of charges put against him, something, something. And she was super upset because the whole thing didn't go through, right? I would understand completely why she would be completely upset because this was something she had worked on for a very long time. And we all know how disgusting Davy Vanity is and was. And when she couldn't get the support she needed, um, Shannon came forward and said, don't worry, um, I'm going to talk to a bunch of bigger creators for you and they're going to help you. And this is going to later, Ashley Lilly found out like none of this went through, like everything Shannon said she did for her to help her with her cause was like a total lie. Um, you know, I've had times before where I've had connections or networking within a job or within the YouTube community where I've said like, I'll go and talk to the person, but if I actually can't make the connection and I can't get the networking done, I need to come back to the person and admit to them, hey, I'm really sorry, I tried to get their attention, but I didn't. Um, they either just didn't answer or, you know, I, I, something came up and I ran out of time. They would rather hear you admit that you couldn't follow through rather than you lie about following through. Especially when we're dealing with something this serious. It's not something you lie about. Next up is Ready to Glare. Um, I actually went, I had to go all the way back to insider.com to find out what she had done with Ready to Glare. And apparently she had written on Locale under a separate profile, not as Shannon herself, but a person pretending to be a fan of both channels that Ready to Glare was sucking up to Shannon to help promote her channel. Now, I don't know about you, but I always thought Ready to Glare stuff was like way better than Shannon's stuff 
no matter what. I mean, she's just the type of girl that got down to business as soon as she started making a video. And not only that, she made them about causes and still does make them about causes. I'm talking like it's in the past. The causes that actually matter. Like she wants to see bad apples get exposed. She wants to see, you know, people venerated, you know, disgusting predators knocked off the internet. She's always had a purpose and I think she succeeded quite well in building up her channel with a, a very famous way of going about her style, her way of delivering information. I don't think there was a time where um, Shannon would have been able to help her get any bigger. Was she friends with Shannon? Yes, I think so. Do I ever think she went to Shannon for promotion? I mean, even if she did, who cares? Like we do this kind of stuff all the time. We always talk about getting a shout out from another person. It's part of the YouTube business. Um, you know, it would be like shaming someone for a natural part of the job, but at the same time that she had to be so despicable to pretend to be a viewer of both channels and then talk trash about her friend. I, I This part really makes me like the most disgusted is all the backstabbing. This is such a backstab. And it's someone who relied on Shannon, who trusted Shannon, who was friends with Shannon. Same with Tipster too. I mean, how do you do this to everybody around you? Like, how do you think this promotes any kind of loyalty? What, what reward do you get out of doing this? What is the motivation? This always kind of like blows my mind when I hear stuff like this. And, and this kind of stuff happens all the time. This nepotism and this sort of backstabbing happens in the workplace. It happens online in the YouTube community. It, it happens everywhere. School, high school, we've all had this happen before. And I never understand why these people want to go there with this kind of information and how they feel justified in doing this. Like, do you really feel good about yourself? Does this, does the reward and the feeling you get far outweigh the distrust and disgusted looks you'll get after? You really got to think about that. Next up is Hopeless Peaches. Um, you probably already know about this, but uh, for a while, Hopeless Peaches was going through a very rough time. Um, and had talked about, you know, committing the S word, um, you know, the unlife word. I can't say it or my video will be demonetized. I don't want that to happen. Um, and two people gave her a lot of crap for this. Actually, I think it was three people total. Toby and Prison Mate Luke and Creepshow Art. Where are all those people now? <laughs> Not making videos, that's where they are. Um, you know, honestly, <sighs> the thing that disgusts me most is that people didn't come back and apologize for this. And the second thing that disgusts me most is even if you think somebody is faking, faking, okay, supposedly faking, uh, wanting to, you know, unlife themselves, um, okay, Maybe they are. Maybe they're not actually going to do it. But they're obviously in a dark place if they're talking about stuff like that. Why would you use that opportunity as an attack? Be like, oh, they're just faking for attention. If they need attention, maybe they need it because they need someone there to comfort them in a dark time. Why, why, do, why does this ever happen? Why do people attack? I saw this in my own community. There was a girl for a while, my old Japan-based community, one girl was pushed to a point of, you know, almost unlifing herself. And I said, okay, like she's done some bad stuff in the past, but we need to stop now. Like, no, let's not be talking about this. All right. Let's not talk trash when it comes to this aspect of her, because I don't think this is something we should fool around with. Threats of unlifing oneself is not something you fool around with. It's not something you joke about. It's not something you go and be like, whatever, you just looking for attention. I mean, you go there and you say like, hey, look, like, I'll make sure the community calms down about this. Get better before you post anything more. And, you know, maybe talk to somebody who can actually help you with this. I don't know if I would put it out on the Internet. But at that same time, um, if they're in such a dire place in their mind where they're thinking these kind of thoughts, they're probably not thinking clearly. And the fact that they put it out on the Internet shows that. And that's not the time to attack people. And that's what Creepshow Art did. She attacked, you know, poor hopeless peaches when she was in one of the darkest times of her life. I, I, 
I will never understand that. Like whether you believe her or not about unlifing herself, it's the exact opposite time to attack and comfort instead, support instead, offer some kind of listening ear. You know, maybe you don't have anything you can say that helps that person, but you could open your ears up instead of blasting them with, you just want attention. Where is everybody now? Toby doesn't make videos anymore. Prison mate Luke doesn't make videos anymore. I think, I mean, my honest opinion is I think both of them could come back and really make a sincere apology, a genuine sincere apology and restart their careers. I even think Shannon could do it to a certain extent, but that's not gonna happen. Somehow their pride in doing this horrible act keeps them away from ever acknowledging what they've done wrong. That blows my mind. Next up is Edwin's generation questioning his sexuality. Is Edwin gay? No, he's not. He's uh, come forward quite a few times, you know, talking about the straight life he lives. Um, you know, obviously he's pro LGBTQ plus, you know, very progressive, very left leaning. Um, but he also has a very genuine relationship with his hetero girlfriend, okay? They, <laughs> they have been together since all the way back in the days where we all used to watch Seer and Onison, okay? Like, I, this is not the type of act that someone keeps up forever on YouTube. Honestly, I think he, if he was going to come forward with this, he would even announce it on his channel. Why would he hide this from the internet? That we're not at a point anymore where someone coming out of the closet is gonna get bashed off the internet, especially someone with Edwin's generation's audience. Nothing would hold him back from announcing he's coming out of the closet and, you know, so it just doesn't even make any sense to me. Everybody would be pretty accepting, but he's just been honest and truthful and said, well, you know, I'm just not, I'm just, you know, I've, I've been with my girlfriend forever. We've been in a straight relationship forever. I don't know why she ever thinks this. And of course, of course, Shannon, now I'm pretty sure she did this while pretending to be another account, went on a rant about how uh, him and his girlfriend, Mina, only meet one time a month. And during that one day that they meet when she comes over from, I believe it's the UK, that's the day Edwin pretends to be straight. What a weird and kind of disgusting place to go with not just your mind, but your snooping. Why is it any of your business what his sexuality is? I don't think I will ever make a video being like, hey guys, I wonder if this person's gay or this guy's straight or this guy's just pretending to be gay or this person's trans or I'm not gonna get into all this different stuff. Like, this is not my business. This is not any of my business. I. It's not a place for you pry. It's a personal place that if they haven't exposed it on the internet themselves, you shouldn't try to make any assumptions. D'Angelo Wallace, pretending to be another account again on Locale, Creepshow Art went on there saying that D'Angelo Wallace wishes, wishes he had as good of a content as Creepshow Art did. Oh yeah, sure, yeah. The guy with what? Doesn't he have like a million subscribers at this point? Yeah, he really wishes he could be only at 300K like you and lose 100K overnight. Yeah, everybody wants to be at that point. Thanks so much for the advice, Shannon. What do we need to do? Do we need to like stalk somebody for 10 years to get to your level? I mean, come on, man. Like, this is ridiculous. Why did she need to throw him under the bus? I, the only thing I can think with D'Angelo Wallace it is just straight jealousy. She's straight jealous of that dude. Like, there's no question about it. He was on lock from the second he started YouTube. He had everything lined up in a row. Great videos, absolutely, you know, great art, great technique, good skill. And he could do pretty much anything he wants with like his level of expertise in what he does. And I think she just got green with envy. Psychono, or Psychono, Psychono, I always forget how to pronounce this properly. Horrible skin. According to her, he has horrible skin and uses a million beauty filters. She said he has the worst Asian skin she's ever seen. Wow, great, yeah, let's attack looks again. Remember what my policy was on that? If you don't have a good argument to bring to the table about why you actually don't agree with someone, I understand that having a civil debate makes sense. But if the first thing you need to go for is attacking somebody's looks, you're bringing a gun to a verbal fight. You're mindlessly shooting your mouth off, attacking everything but what's the actual point of the conversation. Disgusting. Finally, last but not least, her sibling. Her poor sibling, man. Uh, you know, I don't really want to get too much into the details, but pretty much her sibling took the time to try and talk to some people who were 
being harassed, exposed, attacked, secretly stabbed in the back. And the reason she did that was because she had dealt with it her whole life with Shannon, it seems like. From what I can tell, it seems like Shannon's always been this way. This isn't something that pops up overnight. You don't flip a switch and suddenly become a misanthropic psychopath like Shannon, okay? She's been doing this for years, and one of the people who was exposed to it the most, most likely, was her closest family and her sibling. And I think she tried to stay out of Shannon's business for a while and tried to keep as far away as possible from what I read within Shannon's very own report on herself. And it seems like it finally reached a point where she was even talking trash about her on locale so finally her sibling sibling gave up and was just like look i'm gonna release everything and let everybody know what a horrible person she's been behind you know closed doors and uh when she finally did that shannon decided to strike back with all these other rants and ravings and exposing her personal life and all this extra stuff about her family and how much she hates certain people in her family and I, if anything you know maybe the sibling has had a troubled past before but it definitely sounds like a lot of the anger, the toxicity, the attacks all spawn from Shannon and the way she's treated a lot of people in her life. Um, you know, if, you know, the, the, the one thing that I think really convinces everybody that Shannon is the most guilty in all of this, that Creepshow Art is suspect number one in this stalking case is if we compare the two, nobody's coming out of the closet and shouting about how horrible of a person Emily was behind their back. None of the other creators in this who got trash talked on them are having people come out of the woodwork being like, yeah, I heard about how evil tipster is behind closed doors. No one came out and said, yeah, ready to glare, talk trash on me one time on locale. Those people have done nothing. Aside from anything they put out there was on the internet and on YouTube, and they were face forward and, you know, talk straight and shot a straight game the whole time. And what's Shannon done this whole time? She's been spending, God, I don't know how many waking hours working on tearing these other people down. And I think that really speaks volumes as to how despicable her actions are behind the scenes. And I think that's why all of us are on the side of Emily and the other creators who were sort of abused in a way by this harassment, by this trash talk, and by this backstabbing. It's insane to me that someone would spend so much energy and time tearing down everyone closest to them and within their network. There are so many more creative, mind-expanding, understanding, learning, and progressive things you could do with your time. And instead, Shannon decided to use all that time to light fires. And sadly now, she's the only one left burning. We will see where this goes from here. I'm sure Emily's going to release a video soon. She said she's already working on something when hers comes out. Um, maybe I'll even do a live stream of it. I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, I'll figure out where to go from here once I see that. And... Um, you know, I'll do a couple other videos about some other stuff in the art world. What I've really found is you guys seem to be really connected to anything I'm watching about in the art world. So that's what I want to bring to you. Some people said true crime. They wanted to see more true crime. Some people said they wanted to hear more art community discussions. Well, I think I'm going to try and combine a little bit of both. I think I'm going to stick mostly to the art community. Um, maybe a bit of the rant community too because they kind of, I feel like they always kind of intermingle. Uh, intertwine, even though the rant community is kind of dying out. But there also tends to be like some true crime that inter intercepts, intertwines with some of the art community, especially when it comes to TikTok. A lot of weird things go down there. And those always kind of blow my mind and really interest me. So I want to get onto those too. But I also want to stick to a lot of the things that I see within the art community that are very interesting to me. And I hope I have all you guys along for the ride, even after all this creep show art stuff blows over um, and I can keep you up to date. Of course, at any time, if you see a story you want covered, let me know and I'll really look into it as you can probably figure out by now. When I'm interested and I want to talk about something, I go deep. Until next time, I've been the Inksmith and I hope you have a great rest of the day.